Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so I was crafting away, enjoying the process and I realised I hadn't turned on the camera and I thought I better do that because I was moving along a little bit too far and I thought you guys will be like, what has she done? Where is she at? We've missed something. So I thought I better stop. I was, uh, had a little bit of homework to do anyway, as I mentioned in the last video, because I wanted to dig through my collection of Rachel papers and pull some out, which I have done. I, I'll show you those in a moment. I also wanted to hop on my sewing machine and put a little bit of decorative stitching around um, the printed digitals, plus the normal coffee or tea stained um, Parisian essence stained whatever you use paper um, just to give that um, like the zigzag around the cover so I just wanted to sort of bring that all together with some more zigzagging I've also cut out all of the ephemera because we glued all of that yesterday so I've got all of those bits and pieces here ready to play with um, what else did I do? I went hunting for some fine fabric to go down the center of this journal cover, which is 99% uh, dry. I also modified the template that we were using to suit this book now, because remembering this was a signature within the big journal. So the template was designed to stitch this guy into the big journal which is just sitting here that's what I'm pointing to so I had to just modify it slightly so that it we're now assuming that this is a journal cover so I ended up putting some extra lines see the where the little cross is there I marked it with a little x and a little squiggle so the line with the x on it is the top of this the line with the squiggle is the top of my clusters of paper so that then allows me to know where I need to put my holes to stitch in my papers now because my holes were further apart due to them going into the original journal I also had to create some new lines for myself so I just did the old fold in half and half again trick which gave me some brand new points to stitch in my um, thread so that's the new center so to speak the original was up here in the middle and down here which doesn't suit this new journal which is a smaller version of the old journal does that make sense anyway so I'm at the stage now where I was pulling out my needle and thread to stitch in my cluster of papers and that's when I'm like Oh, hang on a minute, I've got to turn the camera on because I'm scooting along. Now I can't find my needle. Did I get it out and then have that thought? Or I was yet to get it out. Let's have a look. I've got a needle I sort of like because it's got a blunt end to it. That's not it. Because if you have a sharp needle, you can repuncture your papers. And I know that that can be very frustrating. And suddenly your holes are bigger than what they need to. I don't know why I'm keeping all of these, all these templates. Because, oh goodness sakes, I'm going to chuck them out. I keep them and you can make them. They're in the bin, for goodness sakes. They're in the bin. You just make a new template to suit whatever you're making. Am I going to go through there and pull out an old template and think that it's the same as the thing I did? Oh, goodness. Anyway, I feel like I've done something big there. I've actually put something in the bin. Isn't that something new? And I've gone through my Rachel papers and actually selected something for this journal. Well, that's big. That's a bit of a Hordesville type thing happening. Oh, goodness me. Get this in here. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Sometimes you stitched in, stitch in signatures and they just go in. And sometimes you struggle. 
I might come up to this hole because for some reason that's just not going in as it should. Oh, I think I much prefer to stitch in fabric. I know it sounds probably daunting to you if you're a paper crafter, but I find fabric so much easier to work with. Turn that around. So now we're coming through. Yep, there's my hole. If you can't get through a hole that you've created, try the, the other one. Because sometimes things just don't line up as good as they could. So by going to the other hole, know what I've done? Hold the phone, my cover's inside out. Okay, stop, 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 stop. And all of that yibby yabba. Let's try and get this out without doing any damage to my papers. With all that chat, it must be, I must have known something wasn't right. I've got my cover inside out because I've got a pocket here, nothing here, a pocket here and a pocket here. And that's how it's to go. Okay, goodness. That was nearly crucial. <clears throat> all right, let's have another go at that my thread or my needle. It should go in reasonably good now because I've made the holes to the right size of the needle. But we'll see. not wanting to go through. Why are you being difficult? There it is. <clears throat> okay. Must be something catching it down there. And down through the top hole. Center. Oh, I'm all thumbs today. Some days you just don't get it together. It's Sunday here today. So I think I started this project on Friday. So I did four videos Friday. I think I did three videos yesterday. And now it's Sunday. So I don't know how many videos I'll do today. I actually feel a little weary. And I think it's because I've been, you know, doing so many videos on this project. But I sort of want to keep it moving along because I'm really enjoying it too. So I'm hoping I've had a coffee. And I'm hoping the brain cells will start, you know, doing their thing. I think that's probably why I started working on this journal without turning on the camera and then realized hang on a minute I'm supposed to be taking you guys along for the journey it's because I was sort of in my own little world <clears throat> see I can't even work out what thread to pull there now to shorten that up oh boy oh boy that's better so I'm just trying to pull it through so that I use less of the um, cord <clears throat> and not waste any there we go okay I can't believe I have chosen some Rachel papers oh I only pulled out three I've got, I think I've purchased from Rachel three packs and they're very sort of different whenever I saw something come up that was a little bit different I, I grabbed it to have a little look at you know what they're all about 
that was probably a year ago and I've put them in a special box well it's not a special box it's a box that you get a, um, a knife and fork set in and they're a special set of knife and forks they were a gift from some dear friends um, the gentleman went to school with my dad and he he's lovely he's just lovely he's a retired doctor now and his wife and um went to school with my dad and my dad always spoke very highly of him and said that he was like a, a kid that came into boarding school from another country so he didn't have any friends didn't know anyone um, was just learning the English language but he knew the basics and my dad was a farm kid who really didn't want to be at boarding school he wanted to be back on the farm and actually becoming a farmer but his parents said no off you go to boarding school and make sure look at that that's a Rachel paper mm, just feels nice written with fountain pen hmm so yeah, no, this, this young lad and my dad then became chums at school. And I think they were all in grade eight, grade nine, something like that. And they came to Brisbane to go to boarding school to see if that's, you know, where they wanted to be. I think my father's parents wanted dad to be a school teacher, but dad was wanting to be a farmer. So I think he was only at school a couple years and then he went back to the farm and purchased his first farm at the age of 17, I think. I think his grandfather loaned him some money, and I think it was like three $3,000 or something, which was a lot of money back then. And I think my mum had sort of come on the scene. She was studying to be a uh, nurse, so she was doing live-in nursing at um, Kingaroy Hospital and training also at Meriburra. So life was sort of beginning. Anyway, how did I get off on this sidetrack? I was talking about knives and forks. Anyway, back to the lovely gentleman and his wife. We've stayed in contact. Well, Dad has. And I have to a degree because I'm in Brisbane. So I've sort of bumped in them time to time because they're sort of in our area. He was a, a doctor uh, in the Mount Cravat area for many years and had a practice there. So I was always around and um, long story short is we moved into a house and decided to have Christmas at our house and mum and dad came to Brisbane and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll find these guys, these, these old friends of the family and I'll invite them along to our Christmas. So we hosted Christmas, did the whole big Christmas party and they came and as a gift... Like, as a gift, they bought me a Stanley and Rogers set of knives and forks. Now, if you know the brand, they are beautiful. They're really heavy, really good quality. There's, they're definitely a set I wouldn't buy myself because I wouldn't spend that much money. So that's the brand. That's the box. Like, look at it. Even the box is, like, crazy gorgeous. And it... I'm going to knock the camera. See, I'm going sidetracked here. So this box, if I can get that up. Yep. So the knives and forks, look at them. Beautiful. And they're really heavy. Like I think I mentioned that. So they were all in here. And then the second part of them, see this bottom section here? You pull this and there's a drawer. So this is my hoardy box for Rachel. So I've got the packs that I've purchased down here as well packs that have purchased so this is like my Italian my Italian hoardy box for Rachel so there you go that's my storage solution isn't a gorgeous box the knives and forks are fantastic really really nice and since then anyone that's sort of come and used them has often gone off and actually purchased the um, set themselves because they've been very impressed with their quality so yeah that was a lovely gift unexpected not required but just oh beautiful and i've got just as much enjoyment out of the box and that's where 
Rachel's goodies live. So yeah. Now, what am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? Now this journal is supposed to be going. Oh, there's a little white bit. It's supposed to be going on the inside of this book, which is going to have stitcheries in it. But it is awful chunky already. Plus the stitcheries. So I suspect that this is going to be a gator mouth really quick. It might not. There's still a bit of room there. But I have a feeling that I probably will end up removing this here. I really do. I reckon that will come out. And I'll probably put a piece of lace through here because I think these stitcheries will, you know, encroach into the space enough and these little guys won't be here. But who knows? They're there for now. The journal is sliding in nicely. So I've gone through and stitched the pages. I don't know, even if it'll go in there, you know. Oh, goodness me. Because you know what's going to happen now. So I'm going to start adding things to pages. And it's going to get bulky. I can feel it already. Like it's, it's going to be nice to have somewhere where I can put samples of fabric to as I do projects. Because there's always, I love these buttons, button cards. I don't know what I'm doing here. Fiddling, that's what I'm doing. I'm just fiddling. Oh, look at the paper. Can't believe I pulled out something and I'm using it. That one's a little bit more modern, 1968, but I do like it. I'm going to pretend it's a receipt for, uh, for fabric. Now I want to pop a tag on there. I like too how there's blank space on the back of some of these pieces. There's another corner. I didn't cut things out real well, did I? I just want to glue in some additional pieces. Okay, there's another old page. I wonder if that can hold a pocket. Pocket's a little bit big. Oh, lovely. Here's another flip. Let's put another tag in there. Yep. to go hunting for some fabrics but it's one of those things until I do the stitcheries how do I know what fabric so I can't go too crazy with the embellishing because this is going to come along with the journal I can pop another pocket here maybe a skinny one oh yeah I love that <clears throat> lovely little kit I do have some fabrics from the cover that I can do a little bit with. But um, there 
down there. Look at those flowers. Let's just get the tags into position because I wanted to use these tags as flips. So that was an easy, easy decision. Then we'll go back through and fiddle around a little bit more. Yeah, beautiful. Maybe, I don't think the pocket's gonna fit there yet. Maybe we could use it as a journal card. I sort of like these tags. I like the the long the long um, feeling that they're giving. Wonder if I folded that. I could put another tag there or do I yeah I like that you're probably wondering where is she going with this I don't even know myself I'm just fiddling decorating seeing how these elements can come together trying to make it a book that in the future I can just come to and add something to it. I'm not wanting to use these tags. They're the ones where they're layered. I don't know. I'm just not feeling like there's something I want to include. So I want to pick all of the tags all the tags that are just single elements there's another one I do have this pocket yeah that'll fit let's put a pocket on this page thank you very much Tracy how easy just fold it over well I think I want to run this through my sewing machine would make a nice little detail on it okay guys I'm gonna jump on my sewing machine and stitch this down not stitch it down but do a decorative stitch around it so I can add that into there and then do I have a tag that will go in not that one that one okay all right, um, I might just whiz around that. So talk amongst yourselves, as Gail would say. I'm not going to stop the camera. I'm just going to whiz down and do it and then come back. So hopefully you can keep yourselves amused. Come back, come back, come back. To stop the video and then rejoin it and yada, yada, yada is just a palaver. So I hope you don't mind that I just did that. So I've just run a little bit of a running stitch around that pocket. So now that can go on that page. And I think I worked out that this tag will fit in there. Lovely. Hopefully there's no glue oozing. There's another spot. 
maybe we add this as a journal card. I haven't used any of the little rectangles. Yeah, let's do that. Or will we? Another pocket. I think I might use these buttons. Yeah, I like that. Might just round those corners. Oh, it's cold. It's hot. It's cold. Sorry, guys. I'm just standing up, putting my cardigan back on. It's one. It's sunny outside. Like it was raining yesterday. The um, the low that brings the rain in from the west and the one coming from the east have all emerged on it on us here in southeast Queensland. And that all happened yesterday. So today it's all gone. Like by last night, the, the low had pushed through. So the rain had sort of petered out and I could see it because I went out to the um, wheelie bin to put some rubbish in the bin and I could see the, the moon sort of breaking through. So I thought, all right, the weather's gone. So I come back in and I checked the weather for the next few days. And yeah, it's it's all gone. So today is sunny, but cold. Icy, icy cold. So I'm sitting in my craft room and I had a coffee. So suddenly I get hot. So you take your coat off. Then that little hot, flushy feeling that you get is um, gone. And now you get cold. So now my hands have got cold. Oh, I tell you. Complain, complain. I really would like a pocket, but they don't quite fit. So I'm going to have to probably trim them down just a little bit. If I take the tiniest bit off. I might mm. I'm just putting my glue lid back on I just glanced across and my glue is not I don't really want to cut that down any more than what it is that paper is too soft to hold anything oh, maybe not and doesn't feel as old. So yeah, I might pop that on there. I could probably use one of the other pockets I haven't cut down now. Where are you? Yeah, that's better. I won't be able to load it up too much. So at least I've used two of the pockets. The one with that I folded. And I've also used this guy. And I've used a button card. And we've got pockets at the back here that we can slide some of these into. Oh, what fun. Like I said, this will be a great journal to take away somewhere where the basics are done. You know, the the elements are there and it's just ready for um, decorating, I guess. I do have, we've confirmed with some friends that we're going to tag along on a cruise to New Zealand in uh, next year. So this would be the type of thing that I would probably take with me because I could record in the back here my journey because I've got plenty of writing space in amongst all this and I can always add pages I've got tags I could record each day it's um you know plenty of space to play what else am I gonna just looking through my scraps here so they're all just good pockets there was these other little fabric-y bits. I don't think I'm going to need those. 
Look at the stamps here. Lovely. Fabric swatch. That's pretty cool. What could I do with that? Can I just use it as a tab? Yeah, I might. Let's put it on as a tab. And then I can always put behind it a piece of fabric. I'll show you what I mean when I come back through with some of the scraps from doing the cover. Yeah, so on this cruise, I could take this whole pack and have somewhere to record the journey. And I always seem to find fabric when I'm on holiday. You know how it is. I might put this one in. I'm going to just punch that hole. There's my punch. Gosh, I've got a mess here, guys. Isn't it glorious when your desk just explodes? <laughs> Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you look at it and go, oh my goodness, let's just try and pull all this together. But most of the time I look at it and go, oh, look at it. It's just creativity exploding. Because I always feel, I guess, that I can tidy up when I'm done. Or let's say I've been at a project for like a week. And I'm like getting over the mess. It pays to have a good tidy up. Because um, you know, I wanted that little hole accessible. So if I use some particular threads, I can attach some of those threads there. Yeah, it's like um, you have a tidy up and it sort of rearranges everything again. And suddenly you find things that sort of were overlooked when your desk gets out of control. So it doesn't hurt to... Have a bit of a, a rummage and tidy even if it's just putting some bull clips on a heap of papers clustering them together doesn't hurt oh i like that what fun is that so what i do is there'll be all fabrics go through here bits of lace as this sort of project builds its own life so you won't see that in this video series but you know, in the future, if I come back and do something in this, I can just say, okay, guys, remember when we made the Tim Holtz Fabric Swatch Love Junk Journal pack? Um, I've done this in it. And I sort of like that idea too because it gives me fresh eyes because otherwise you sort of tend to... I might use these... You tend to get on the, the train of it and go from start to finish and, you know, it's got a similar feel all the way through. So I don't mind the fact that I pick it up and uh, start again on it because it can go in a direction that I would never have thought of today. And our skills increase. Like we get better and better the more we play with all this. So who knows what might come my way in the way of ideas or inspiration. And then I go, oh, I'll, I'll pull that journal out and continue with it. It's just, um, you never know. Or like I said, you go on a holiday somewhere and maybe it's for a period of time where you're like, well, what am I going to do? And you start to have the shutters that you're not in your craft room. That's me. I know that's all of you, actually. We all have those feelings. We use that as a paper, as a tab. So, yeah, you start to panic that you don't have your craft room. So these sorts of things to have in your cupboard are, you know, a really good idea. Let's just glue that a little bit better. And it's interesting to see how the project will evolve. And because I'm a sewer as well, I sort of like spaces where I just want to do, so I just want to do a simple stitchery, but then it just goes into the cupboard. Well, then I can go to some of my journals, my sewing slash junk journals, and have somewhere to pop it. 
or I pick up a sewing slash junk journal and I have a look at the colors in it like it's like a mood board for me if you if you know what mood boards are it's often where someone in the professional world of design will put together all of their ideas in their minds about um, um, what am I thinking I feel like I need a tab here and I have these tabs that I've pre-made that I love using let me just grab them one moment I love these books that you open and there's space inside. I just love that. I've got a heap of them. So I might just add a couple tabs. So I have them pre-made and all it is is a piece of calico. I've shown you these before, but I'll give you the dimensions of them. They're really easy to make. They can be jazzed up because they're neutral. So two inches of calico. Then I've picked a lace that I could fold in half. And this one is different this side versus that side. So all I've done is folded the calico in half. It's about oh, two and a half inches. And then I've stitched the lace on that edge where your fingers would go. <clears throat> and they're really handy just to add to the edge of a page. And you can add more to them. So I could pin a charm. I could pin a charm in there. Oh, I'm cack handed today. I could add a snippet of fabric just to add a pop of colour. Say you were doing a, a purple um, a purple journal. You can put them on the side of the page. You can put them on the top of the page. Maybe the next one I'll put on the top of the page. They're just really handy. There we go. Easy to attach. Lovely. So let's go in a little bit and see where else we can add a tab. So we've got one there. Just needs a little bit more glue. It's tricky when you do a journal that you're not yet finished. Sometimes, like I just added that glue there, sometimes it doesn't hurt to have them where they flip up a little bit because let's say I wanted to slide some fabric in under that. Well, now I've glued it down. It makes it a little bit hard. But for example, if that wasn't, you could slide that in there and it would look like the, the fabric's been there the whole time, but you've actually added it, you know, a year later. So don't, don't, what I guess I'm trying to say is when it's a journal, you're yet to finish and it might be put it in the cupboard for a rainy day journal. Let's call it that. Uh, these little edges not quite attached. Don't stress about them. Just leave them. Leave little gaps where you can sneak things into it. It's like these um, here. They are screaming out for some fabric tab to go on top of there. Oh, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to cut my my little tab here so once again it's a good size that I can just snip that and add that to there as a bit of a decorative element I didn't want to use any of those that were double layered like that and I have oh well there we go it's not bad for a little idea too to have in the journal just to remind me to do something like that there where am I going to put this other one I've got a tiny itty bitty one let's pop him here he seems to be in the right proportions for the I want it to go up a little bit in the air because I do have a button there that I want to see I think that button needs a thread coming through it too. Wouldn't that be a bit of fun? Okay, off on a sidetrack now.
Let's get my book all. And I'm going to punch a little hole there and there. It's a fun thing about buttons when they're printed onto things. You can do things with them. Let's just grab a little bit of thread. Do I have any pre-threaded before I chop another piece off? Nope. May not need to use a needle. Yes, I will. It's not going to go through. So I'm just going to add a bit of a decorative. Uh, wrong way. So I'm going to go through the front. And then back through there. So another spot that I can store a thread that may have been used in one of the stitcheries further back in the journal. Lovely. The other thing I need to do is I need to get my calico back out and tear... and tear down some pieces of fabric that are sitting in the journal ready to go. There we go. How simple is that? So the button now looks like it's got a feature on it. The little tab got cut down and it's just given me a little decorative element. Um, I've got a hair caught in there. Mm, gross. Okay, that's better. Um, so I've still got a couple little corner tabs here that I could use. Might put that one there. Does anyone else feel like when they go away from their craft room, there's like this built up feeling of, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? What if I get bored? isn't it but I know you all have the same feeling it's crazy I think it's because we've got such creative minds that we're constantly thinking and needing to do see now I'm hot thinking and needing to do something so coat back off it's going to be one of those days coat on coat off so I've got one more little tabby swatch that I could find a home for. Let's go to the front again. So it's not over decorated by all means. Rather cute popping out the top of that. And I might just leave the bottom of that not glued so that I could easily slide underneath that right in there um, a piece of fabric, like a literally like it's holding it onto the paper. Okay, so that would slide under there like a little swatch all right I like that glue on now this envelope should we do something with that what's its story it folds up it folds over an interesting journaling spot it's upside down There's, so it goes like that so if that was to glue down and that could be even a side tuck as well as a 
put a journal card fit in there. Yeah, it will. Oh, I like that. And I don't even mind that page that I'm mucking around with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew around it so that it's got some embellishing done prior. I'm going to glue it down and uh, maybe, maybe create something here that it can tuck under. Maybe a button or I don't know. It seems like it's going to hold anyway. Maybe I don't need to do that. I might just round those corners. Yeah. So it's going to be a spot that opens up that could be journaled in. It could be sealed up if I want it to seal up in the future. But for now, it's going to be just glued top, bottom and three sides. Top, bottom and the one side and then one of these guys can slide in there I might even put a couple in there because they could be cut down for future pockets and at least they're in the journal and if not I've got this little flippy flippy floppy thing that can open up so that's the plan for that so pretty straightforward um, I won't go to my sewing machine now because that's, you know, probably pushing my luck a little. But all I'm going to do is whiz around it in straight stitch and put some glue here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And then those little pockets can go into that spot. So we'll let that sit there for a moment. Let's go back and see what else we want to do to our little journal. What have we got left? We've got a heap of tags, which I don't think I'm going to use. We'll keep them for a rainy day. This little guy I do like. Is there a home for him? Do I do another pocket? That's real soft, that paper. Maybe that could be a tuck. No, it's too soft. Mm, let's see. I think I've probably got enough, you know. There's quite a bit happening. And I've got room. I love how these are got a bit of depth. So if I create something quite chunky on here, let's say it's a heap of samples of fabric. It's um, looking good. The other thing I couldn't decide what I was going to do is whether I'd stitch over the stitch line. Here, just to make it look like it's actually stitched but I've decided I wouldn't I usually would but I thought no I'm just gonna let Tracy's artwork do its thing I love how that's got the ability to have thread put on it oh, there's so much space plus I can write here not that I'm a writer I'm more of a collector of fabrics and things and laces yeah Yeah, I don't think there's a home for that. Oops. Don't think there's a home. So let's just slide it in the back there as part of pieces that I can use. Lovely. So that I'm going to call finished. And these elements I'm just going to put to storage. And what I mean by that is I'll grab a little plastic bag these guys here if it's big enough for that piece no I need a bigger one so plastic bags plastic bags sorry guys I'm just ratting through my cover here looking for one of these it's the next size so I'm just going to place in there all the bits that I didn't use Oh, there's labels yet to go in this journal. So somewhere in this mess, there's the fabric swatch labels. So we'll have a little look through them as well. So they're definitely surplus. And I guess if, if I don't use them in the meantime in another project and I'm getting ready to go somewhere and I want to take this package with me, 
this might end up coming into the suitcase anyway because it might grow into a second element for my, my project like a another journal or a smaller piece yeah that's good just needs to relax a little which happens I might sew around that as well so I've got a little bit more sewing to do in this and um, I'm just thinking about this journal here I'm a little bit reluctant to actually glue that in you know because I think that this will be quite thick when it's finished so I think this might just be with it as an additional journal so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a piece of fabric here so that it's um, finished or do I use some paper no, I'm going to use fabric and you know what I'm going to do we're going to make a flip with some calico here's some we're going to make a flip that can have more stitchery added to it so what do I mean by that? I don't know if this is big enough. Oh yes. So what we're going to do is tear a piece. That will cover the back. But we're going to make it a little bit longer. So that it can fold in and have some more stitchery added to it. I'm going to leave that selvage there. I'll just pinch that back a little bit. So it's a flip on the back cover for more stitchery. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid, I've created more space to do stitchery. So that will go on there to become the cover for the, the back of the journal. And let's find a piece of lace because I do need to do a little bit of trimming. Let's have a little look in my little lacy pile here. This one here is nice and we're going to put that through there. Okay, and that will flip like so. So now I have the opportunity to put a piece of embroidery here and I could do a big landscape style piece here or two separate pieces. So sometimes the space to do your stitching in might not be enough for the idea you have, especially if it's a landscape type theme. So to have some internal book pages that flip out is um, really really handy and I'll show you one if I can get my hands on it I recently did um, a study of mushrooms I had a heap of mushrooms in my head literally floating around of um, different ways I could make mushrooms so I needed a space that was landscape um, and the inside of a cover is a perfect spot to create a flip you could do it on your pages in the journal by all means but um, it was just too good of a spot to not use so lots of lots of glue just so that I know that that's held now of course the piece of embroidery that would eventually go in here won't be stitched in because you don't have access to the back of the fabric to hide your threads which is not an issue I would just use the glue stick and just pop some glue on there plop plop place some weight on it and you would find that um, it would be you know adhered now just to add a little bit of decorative trim I'm going to place that piece of lace through there just as a little something a little bit of glue and I'll put also 
a little bit of art glitter glue. Now I could have um, stitched that lace onto there if I had time and I was maybe sitting on holiday somewhere making something like this. I would um, have hand stitched that little trim there, but you don't have to, like I did on the cover actually, didn't I? So I'm just going to put that there. So my piece of embroidery, my future piece of embroidery would sit here. So before this journal would go into the cupboard for a rainy day, I would tear the piece that will be used here and just sit it in the book. I would then tear the piece that would sit here and just have it in the book. That way you know, so I'm just finger creasing that just to make that encourage it to stay so that way you know that everything is here i tear the piece that would go here and there and there and so on so your book is ready ready to go so that's my journal for st future stitcheries on a rainy day i love it i've got a pocket here that lace is curling up I've got a pocket here for any little bits and pieces. Why is that not gluing down? Could do with a little stitch that would hold it. Oh, so this project's just morphed into two journals here. Oh, I'm a shocker. I've got some elements here that I know will inspire me to do something, these old labels, so they can stay with the book. My cover has been completed and I love how there's a pop of yellow. So I'd say yellow will pop up through the book. I can write something here, maybe the year that I do my embroidery. Let's say I dedicate this to 2023 and everything I do can go into there or I can put my name there I've got plenty of pages I've even got a flip at the back here oh love it love it so there was something else I wanted to do here on it there was lace needed somewhere because the glue no it's not there it must be on one of those other pages let's have a look at this little guy. Oh no. Alright, that's all good. That's all good. And I've got myself a blank journal to go with the project that can also potentially record something. And you know, at the end of the day, this could just be separate and become something on its own as well. So I do need to stitch that, glue it in. What I'll do at the end of this video is I'll post a picture of that so you can see what I did. Now, the other thing we need to have a little look at are the labels. Now, what did I do with them? Oh, who knows? I'm getting close to the hour now. So what I'm going to do is I'll stop the video. I will tidy my desk a little bit because I still have some elements over there from this whole project that I'd like to do something with. So, so far we've got a journal of stitchery um, out of the cover. We've got a side journal that has a stitchery feel about it to go with it or without. Like, who knows? But it's ready to go. And I just want to do a little bit more embellishing with the sewing machine because I can't take my sewing machine away with me. And I have lots of bits and pieces left from the project that may or may not end up with it. So they can just go into my ephemera box and they may drift into a project in the future. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, love it. Okay, guys, I shall say goodbye and I will see you in the next video and we'll keep working on some other ideas to do with all my bits and pieces. See you soon. Bye.